Good day to everyone. To PASCOM, thank you very much for inviting me to be the fourth Fernando Sanchez Memorial Speaker. It is a great honor to be chosen as one among those worthy of paying tribute to someone I consider as the father of community medicine in the Philippines. We owe the rebirth of PASCOM to Dr. Sanchez as the staunchest supporter and advocate of community medicine when he was alive. So at this point, may I request a minute of silence for us to remember our great mentor and to wish him well wherever he is now. Once again, may I greet everyone a pleasant good day. I hope we are all well and COVID-free in these trying times. I was invited to talk about the practice and teaching of community medicine. While I did practice ComMed for more than 10 years before I started to teach it and continued to practice while teaching it for another 18 years, I wonder if I was the most appropriate speaker for this topic because as most of you know, I retired in 2018. And though I have been involved in some ComMed and PASCOM activities since then, I have no experience in facing many of the present day challenges active practitioners and teachers are facing, especially since the start of the pandemic. I am sure these challenges are very trying and I commend those of you who are surpassing these tests daily. One of the most important challenges when I started the practice was the lack of training for it. And I believe this lack of training continues to be a problem at present. Most of us go through a type of medical education that prepares students to work in a hospital or a clinic. When I was a student, we did go through some public health courses, but most of the sessions were so boring that very few of us learned anything from it, if any. We also had community immersions then, but we felt we needed to do something other than what we saw and did during those rotations. We received some guidance from a few family medicine practitioners, mostly working with NGOs at that time, but it was our sincere desire to improve the health situation of the country that pushed us on. So many years have passed since then, and still there is no clear and unified picture of what the discipline of community medicine is. And I believe this is true all over the world. Indeed, PASCOM has done so much to address this issue in the past years since its rebirth in 2014. The present set of officers, particularly, have achieved so much towards clarifying what COMED is, and I sincerely congratulate them for this. I am hoping that at least in this small group of active PASCOM members, we are united in the definition of community medicine, that is, at the very heart of community medicine is primary health care. We have also realized recently the need to emphasize the importance of population and public health in the practice and teaching of community medicine and the realization of primary health care. However, there is the world outside PASCOM that must be conquered, starting with our own medical schools. The enactment of the universal health care law has often a big opportunity for us to strengthen the discipline and we should take full advantage of it because we know that most deans and other medical faculty do not see ComMed the way we do. I used to be part of the Our Schools Interns Committee with Dr. Anthony Cordero. I think most of you know him. I hope he doesn't mind if I quote this observation. He said that when the committee discussed issues on the different specialties like NSS or OPTA or OB, most of the other faculty members would stay silent and whisper among themselves that they can't say much because they're not experts in these fields. But when issues in ComMed were discussed, everyone had something to say, as if, as if everyone understood ComMed and thought they had the right to give their opinion. They think ComMed is so simple. Indeed, COMED has not gained its due respect. I believe the most common understanding of COMED, not only in our country, but everywhere else in the world, 
is that COMBAT is mainly the delivery of primary care services at the community setting, and that most of these services are clinical. This contributes to the difficulty in teaching community medicine, and a textbook on community medicine would be a great help. PASCOM needs to lead the way to draft and publish such a textbook and make it acceptable nationwide. Aside from a textbook, we need other teaching and learning resource materials because there is so little available for COMMED faculty to work with, even in other countries. A compilation of the different successes and even failures of community medicine practitioners over the years with an analysis of why these experiences succeeded or failed would, so, would also serve as a good learning and teaching resource. There are good experiences in other countries, particularly Africa and Latin America and a few other Asian countries that we can learn from. But I think we here in the country have some of the richest experiences in community medicine, though most of them are yet to be written and reported. Many of us in COMED have some hesitancy to write and publish, and we need to overcome this. We need to develop the competencies and the inclination to document and publish our work. Closely connected to the lack of understanding of the nature of community medicine, as I have implied, is the low regard for community medicine, especially by our colleagues in the medical field. When I had just graduated and a small group in our class was planning to work as community medicine practitioners, we were invited to a dinner by a parent of a classmate who was part of the group. This parent was a member of the Board of Regents of the University of the Philippines at that time. He brought with him a renowned neurosurgeon who told us over dinner that only grade B and C students went to come in because they had no other choice. A classmate in the group was really riled up by this because she was in the top 10 of the class and the board exams. The parent was, of course, trying to dissuade his daughter from going to the community. Much later, when I had just started teaching ComMed, I met a friend from pre-med who was also teaching ComMed in another school. He was so defensive about being a ComMed faculty, like he was ashamed he was one. He said that it was only a stepping stone while waiting for a position in another department open. This has never been an issue for me personally, but it is one reason that there are so few of us in the practice. Of course, the practice itself is not easy, but I believe that even when we become teachers, we should continue to practice community medicine. Otherwise, we will not be able to teach it well. We Combat teachers need to know and actively work with the communities we are sending our students to. We need to ensure that programs we start with our communities lead to true benefits for them, the very least of which is empowerment to work at gaining better health for themselves. This is the only way our students will learn from the experience and hopefully consider COMMED as an option after graduation. Personally experiencing successes in community work will also help us make our session with students more alive and interesting. However, working with communities is not something we learn in medical school. Most of us come from relatively affluent families and we are not used to working with urban poor or rural communities. For many of us, working with communities requires almost a change in lifestyle. The community will only show us how they feel and what they really think and understand if they are comfortable with us. And to be comfortable with us, we need to break the traditional image of the intimidating doctor, somebody way up there, always telling them what they should know and what they should do. We need to become a little more like them, dressing simply, talking their talk, doing what they're doing with a smile on our faces. I suppose this is why I have always been told that I sacrificed a lot and gave up many opportunities in order to practice community medicine. But I never felt that way. We sacrifice when we do something we don't want to do. I have never regretted my choice to be in community medicine. I have always felt 
that COMNET is one of the most important and basic disciplines in medicines, medicine for it to achieve what I believe is the profession's main goal, and that is health for all. Besides, I found community medicine very interesting, and it pushed me to keep studying and learning. Every community is different and should always be approached uniquely. And this provides so many opportunities for us to learn and widen our perspective. Many issues that communities consider as basic for their health may not be related to anything we learned in medical school. The first community I worked with in Batangas as a comment faculty was convinced that garbage was their most basic health problem. What did I know about garbage? So, my students and I had to study the most basic scientific facts and laws about garbage before we could even start helping our community. Of course, we also learned to reach out and connect to our community with experts in garbage management. And we encounter so many similar issues in our practice that communities find basic for their health, issues we know as the social determinants of health. As we should know, many of these social determinants go beyond the boundaries of health. Though community medicine may not usually make the practitioner rich, there are other rewards as long as we work well and make sure the communities we work with are benefiting from our work. There are international organizations of community-oriented health practitioners who are interested in learning from good practices in community medicine. One such organization is the Network Towards Unity for Health, or simply the TUFH. We at the University of the Philippines were lucky that our university supported our travels so that we could present our work in the annual conferences of this organization. We were able to, to travel to several countries because of this, and we found these conferences rewarding, not only because we saw so many new places, but more importantly, because our work was always appreciated there. After the first time I presented there, our work was used as the welcome poster for the following year's conference, and I was invited to write an article about it for their newsletter. The next year, I was able to publish in a peer-reviewed Scopus Index journal of the organization because the editor of a special edition heard my report and invited me to contribute an article about it. Still, on another of those annual events, my colleague, Dr. Richard Tan and I, were invited to contribute a chapter in an international book on interprofessional education. Again, because the author heard our report and thought our work was important and worthy to be read by people around the world. But the most fulfilling reward from the community is the feeling of truly helping others achieve a better version of themselves, catalyzing a community to organize itself to solve their prioritized problem and eventually getting national recognition and awards because of it. A municipal health officer in tears of gratitude because we had helped her draft what she claimed was the first ever health plan that she was able to present to the local health board after years of working in the position. Health clubs that are still active long after we helped them start it. Midwives and barangay health workers becoming more confident and able to help their communities work together for their own health. Nakakataba ng puso, di ba? But maybe the best gift I have received for my work are the students who are now doing community work, whether or not I was a strong influence in their career choice. I would like to believe that when I retired, I left some of the best minds in medicine that we had nurtured to continue the practice of and teaching of community medicine. And that's why I retired Captain. Community medicine is indeed rewarding. Once again, a good day to all of you. Thank you.